Hello, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to be talking about enclosure types and design. So there's a whole bunch of different types of enclosures that people use to enclose their speakers. But today we're just gonna be talking about three of the main ones. They're probably the ones that you'll most likely start out building. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you a few tips that I use uh, to make building each of these enclosure types a little easier. So make sure you stick around for that. So the types we're gonna be talking about today are sealed, ported, and passive radiator. So let's start with sealed. So a sealed enclosure is gonna be the easiest enclosure for anyone to build because it's basically just a speaker in a box. So how it works is the air that's trapped inside the enclosure behind the woofer acts as a spring against the cone of the speaker helping to control its movement. It also allows the cone of the woofer to return to zero when there's no signal quicker and more accurately than if it was just in free air. So some pros of a sealed speaker enclosure is that it's really easy to build. You basically just build a box um, and you don't have to be perfect in making the box a specific size. You want to make it as close as you can to the calculation that you come up with uh, but it, it doesn't need to be exact not nothing close to the other uh, enclosure types that we'll be talking about it's also really inexpensive it, it, like i said it's basically just a speaker in a box it's the least expensive of the other enclosure types that we'll be talking about the enclosure size can also be pretty small uh, so it's great for applications where size is a restriction. They also increase transient response. Um, transient response is like really quick bursts of sound. So like clapping or a snare hit, stuff like that. Some cons are that the bass is really limited depending on the driver that you put into the enclosure. Also, the driver won't be as efficient as it will be in other enclosure types. Um, this just means you're going to need a little more power to power speakers and sealed enclosures. All right, so now let's talk about a ported enclosure. So a ported or a base reflex or a vented enclosure, uh, this is probably going to be the most popular and the most used enclosure type. And it's basically just a sealed enclosure with a really specific hole in it. So how it works is there's a tube in the enclosure that allows energy from the back of the woofer to push air through the tube and out the enclosure of the speaker. And basically what this does is it reinforces the lower frequencies that are produced by the driver. The diameter and length of the tube as well as the size of the box are tuned using the driver's feel small parameters or TS parameters. Those are basically just really specific measurements of the speaker and what it can do. You can usually get these measurements from the manufacturer of the speaker, um, but also whoever's selling you the speaker usually has those parameters as well. And a lot of the time, if you're buying them online, uh, there'll be a little section like a data sheet that you can download and all the, all the specs will be on there, the, the feel small specs. So a pro of the ported design is increased bass output or low range frequencies. The sealed enclosures low frequencies are really dependent on the actual driver that's put into the enclosure. But with a ported design, you can actually extend that base range from a specific driver down lower because of that port tube and the way it's tuned. Ported design also increases efficiency of the driver so you need a little less power. It also offers really low distortion. So it sounds good. Some cons of ported speakers are that sometimes they need to be a little bigger. They're definitely much harder to construct. Uh, there's a lot of design that goes into it, a lot of calculating and tuning of the port and the enclosure size. Uh, so it's a little more difficult. It's also more expensive to build than a sealed speaker because you have to pay for the port and there's a little more work that goes into making the enclosure. All right, so the third design we're gonna be talking about is a passive radiator. Now, a passive radiator is really similar to a ported enclosure. Uh, the only difference is you're replacing the port with another speaker. And it's passive because there's no motor, there's no magnet on the back of the speaker. It's just a speaker cone without a magnet. 
So just like in the ported enclosure, it uses the energy from the back of the speaker to drive the passive radiator. So the air that's moving around inside the enclosure from the speaker is pushing on the back of the passive radiator, moving the speaker cone and creating the sound. Now the radiator is tuned to a lower frequency by adding weight to the back of the cone. So some pros of this design is that you can get the same low frequencies that you can get from a ported design, except you don't need to have that long tube inside the enclosure. So you can make the enclosure a little bit smaller with the passive radiator. There's pretty easy low frequency adjustments just by adding or taking away weight from the back of the radiator. So a big con is the cost. Passive radiators are expensive, um, much more expensive than uh, ported, definitely more expensive than a uh, sealed design. So take that into account uh, when you're deciding. All right, so let's talk about construction. So a question that I get asked all the time is, how big do I make the enclosure for my speaker? Or how, do I, how can I tell how big to make the enclosure for my speaker? And the best way to do that is to use uh, online calculators. You'll use the feel small parameters from your driver that we talked about earlier. Uh, you'll plug those into the, the calculator and out will pop the best size for that speaker that you're using, depending on which enclosure type you're gonna be using. And I'll link all the calculators that I use down in the description, so check those out. All right, so let's do some tips. So for sealed enclosures, one thing you can do to trick your driver into thinking, not thinking, behaving as if the enclosure was much bigger than it actually is, uh, is to fill that enclosure with some sort of uh, filler. Uh, I like to use polyfill, uh, but all it does is it slows down the air moving inside the enclosure, making the driver think that there's much more space in there. Now this does affect the sound of the speaker. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. What I would recommend is to put a little bit of fill in it. Actually, try it out without any fill, see what it sounds like, put a little fill in it, see what that sounds like, put a little more, see if it sounds better, and, and adjust accordingly to your own ear. So with a ported speaker, the best thing you can do is to take your time while designing it. Um, draw out exactly what you wanna make get the measurements for everything, double check things before you start constructing. The worst thing you can do is to be halfway through cutting your wood and realize that you're you know, a few inches off in one place and you know, what do you do? You're gonna make the, the enclosure a little bit smaller and then it doesn't sound as good as it could have been. Um, so definitely take your time, draw out everything that you need to do, uh, make a cut list have that cut list really close to you while you're making your speaker, refer to it often, and uh, you should be solid. So passive radiators, I don't have a huge amount of experience with this type of enclosure. Uh, I have made a few though. On the back of passive radiators, there's usually a little threaded hole that you can put a screw into. And the best way I found to add or subtract weight is to add washers to that screw. Um, add a little more and it'll lower the frequency, take a few off and it'll raise the fre frequency. Now you need to be careful not to add too much weight, uh, too much weight and it won't move at all and it's gonna be no good. So find that sweet spot um, and you'll be good. Takes a little bit of trial and error, but it's not that bad. Okay, so I hope this video helps some people out there. I do get a lot of questions about enclosures. Um, if I didn't cover anything that you still have questions about, ask me in the comments. I comment back to, to most people's comments, so hit me up. If this did help you out, give me a like, uh, it helps. Also, this is an ongoing series I'm doing uh, about speaker building and speaker design. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please subscribe. Uh, that way you'll get all the new videos right away. And if you have a suggestion for an upcoming video, uh, again, hit me up in the comments or send me an email. Uh, I really appreciate the feedback. And thanks for watching. All right. I don't have a cool way to, I'm gonna go down. Bye.